You're listening to The Lindia Grant Show. Think on these things with Lindia Grant. Well, good evening, Radio One listeners. Thank you for tuning in to the Lydia Grant Show. I am Lydia Grant, your host, and we're so happy to have you here with us today. It's a little hot out, but, as you know, it's Friday and it's Eagle Day, and we're excited. So we have uh, a great show lined up for you today. Uh, we're going to have our own Dr. Julianne Malvo to talk about politics, which I'm telling you, that is really it got it going on here this week. Uh, last night, I mean, I've been watching all day. And then we're going to have uh, Lewis Nelson is going to give us a special announcement. He is the designer of the Korean War Memorial, and he's going to give us a special announcement. Are you there, Lewis? I'm here. Glad to be back. Nice to be here. All right, all right. And then our other guest after the commercial break is going to be Jennifer Branison. She is a brand new author. Uh, she is a friend of mine. Has been working with my show uh, almost since I got on the air, but she doesn't anymore. She's launched uh, her own business and she's written a new book. And I'm excited about her telling you uh, what she's doing these days. How are you today, Jennifer? Hello, I'm doing amazing, Lindia. Good. Good to have you here today. Now let's say hello to Dr. Julianne Malvo. Dr. Julianne, I'm telling you, this has been good last night. Let's see what you got to say. I want to talk to you about it, but I'm going to let you do your thing. Go ahead. Girl. Girl. <laughs> let's talk I with know. <laughs> we could go back to last night. Steve Bannon was found guilty of contempt of Congress. He, yeah. he has paid so more whoop tickets than he can cash. Did you see him outside of the court talking smack about Benny Thompson? You know, uh-huh. when, you, when you don't have anything, all you can do is talk smack. He, he's not man enough to come down here. No, he was man enough not to come down there. He did not need to come down there. And Steve Bannon was found guilty of two counts of contempt of Congress. Um, each count carries between 30 days and a year in jail. They will not sentence him until October, but he need to go to jail. He's yes. the one who refused Congress, said he was not going to testify. Uh, just behave like what he is. We're not going to talk about that on the air. This is a Christian program, but you know what uh-huh. he is. But in yes. any case, that to me, that's almost the top of my news. Like, oh, happy day. Now, uh-huh. what you said last evening, we have been getting revelation after revelation after revelation from the January 6th committee about what happened on January 6th. Um, we learned that Vice President Mike Pence was close to danger, so close to danger, Lindia, that Secret Service people were calling their wives and saying goodbye. Yes. Um, I mean, he was so close. One one reporter said he, the um, those insurrectionists were within spitting distance of him. Now I don't know how far you can spit, but I can't spit more than two or three feet. So no, uh, I just don't know. It literally. Revelation after revelation after revelation shows what's been going on. But, you know, we still have a people and a party that's in denial. In denial, Mm -hmm. one-third of Republicans still believe that Trump won the election. Yes, yes. If you look at the uh, tape, they have a tape of him. They were trying to get him to say that he lost it. He just said, I can't say that. I just can't say that. And they've shown that. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's a legislator in Wisconsin who's still, Lindia, still, almost two months later, trying to overthrow the 2020 election. I mean, I don't get these people, but I don't have to get them. What we have to understand is that there is, we, we're moving towards an internal civil war. Um, yes. You know, the majority of all Americans fought Trump for uh, January 6th, but most of them feel that he will not suffer any consequences. And the slow pace with which Merrick Garland is moving gives people some cause to that. Is he going to do anything? I think he will, but I think he's moving too slow, and it's a challenge. 
in any case, let's leave them people alone. Uh, just leave them alone. We, we, uh-huh. we, you know, if you watch the stuff, uh, you know, if you watch it, you could get angry, you could get sad. You know, where are we? And as um, well, I, I was saying, some, many of us have been saying we go around the world talking about democracy. We go all over the world talking about democracy. What did we show the rest of the world? We have been the model of democracy, but what did we show the rest of the world? The United States has lost a lot in terms of esteem because of what happened and because mm-hmm. nobody owns it. So this is the issue. Now, move it right along. Mm-hmm. You've got to keep our prayers up for Joe Biden. He has COVID. Um, mm-hmm. Sorry that he has COVID. Um, I, the press was, I think, I think that Kareem Jean Pierre is my new uh, shero. They were fussing about, well, how did he get COVID? The issue is not how he got it. We know that they have breakthrough infections. The issue is what he's doing about it. And he is doing what he's supposed to do, is following doctor's orders. So I, I, I just don't get some of these folks and their pettiness. But he has COVID. We know that. First Lady Jill Biden does not have COVID. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a good thing. But meanwhile, Biden's numbers are horribly low. Um, only 36% of all Americans are look at him favorably. That's down 4.2. It's the, the ratio is 11, uh, it's 10 to 1. No, it's 4 to 1. Four people disapprove him for every one that approves of him. So we've got a tough road to hold. But you know, we're, we, we're old school. Remember that song? I may not be the one you won't, but I know I'm the one you need. Remember that song? That's yes, I do. People, because you know, a lot of people don't want it, but we need it. Who yeah. mm-hmm. is going to uh, A majority of Democrats say they want him to run, but then who would run? But I'll mm-hmm. tell you, one, one person who might run, Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. Uh, mm-hmm. Gavin just passed the legislation today. This, this was a couple hours ago, actually, Lydia. Passed the legislation that um, says that people can sue people who manufacture, distribute, transport, or import assault weapons or ghost guns. Mm-hmm. After the Texas legislation, so just like a Texas person can sue you if you're getting an abortion, he's saying, if I know you have a ghost gun, I can sue you. Um, it's a tactic, but it's really raising his profile nationally. Um, let me finally take a minute to talk about our economic news. You know I always have to go there. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, we are expecting to see inflation continue. Gas prices have gone down, but just a little bit. But guess what always hits us with gas prices? Labor Day. Leading mm-hmm. up to Labor Day, you always see a spike. And so gas prices are coming in, but very, slow, very, very slowly. We expect them to spike back up. Meanwhile, many economists are saying we will probably have 9% inflation through the end of the year. The Fed will be... The Fed meets on July 27th next week. They're likely to int- increase interest rates between three quarters of a point and one point. That's going to push mm-hmm. more people out of housing markets, make it more difficult for people to get mortgages, and basically give those people who save are going to get more money. But those people who are in debt are going to get slammed. So we have volatile political news, but also volatile economic news, Lydia. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Julian. We appreciate you, and we hope to talk back to you next week. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to go to a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to hear a quick announcement about the Korean War Memorial it has been restored, and then this uh, next weekend uh, in Washington, there's going to be a big celebration to unveil the new memorial and Lewis Nelson, designer of the Korean War Memorial, is going to just give us some announcement and then we're going to talk to Jennifer Branson. We'll be back in a moment. If it wasn't for my care coach at Merrill Health, I probably wouldn't be so healthy right now. As a man, you know we don't get checkups or see a doctor regularly anyways. It's probably just a man thing because none of my partners go either. We know we should, but we just don't and hope it works out. So what changed for you? AmeriHealth assigned me a care coach, somebody that gives one-on-one help, answer questions, explain things, and help set my appointments. 
She also helped me understand what having high blood pressure really means and ways to manage it so it doesn't kill me. It ain't nothing to play with. If you're a member of MerHealth, ask for a care coach. I'm glad I got mine. At AmeriHealth, if you need a care coach, you can have one. Just call us at 1-877-759-6224 to get connected. 1-877-759-6224. This program is funded in part by the government of the District of Columbia Department of Healthcare Finance, Mayor Muriel Bowser. Washington and former religion columnist, Lindy Grant. Who Moved My Cheese is a book about two types of people, those who accept change quickly and move on, and those who hem and haw and try to figure things out. They didn't see change coming and waste valuable time trying to figure out what happened, how did this happen to me. Let's call this group procrastinators. The lesson inside the cheese story is simple. Life is change. Brother said it best when he said, if I accept you as you are, I will make you worse. However, if I treat you as though you are what you're capable of becoming, I help you become that. We must change and keep moving. The Bible tells us to seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open unto you. Ask and it shall be given. Read more in the religion column of the Washington Informer, an award-winning African-American newspaper. We don't report crime or gossip, just positive news. Pick up the Washington Informer or visit us online at WashingtonInformer.com. Call 202-561-4100 for more information. This is Frank Smith with the African-American Civil War Museum in Washington, D.C., located at 1925 Vermont Avenue Northwest on the Green Line. Did you know that a recent study found that children who visit museums do better in school and in life than children who do not? So parents, teachers, and preachers, let's get moving. I promise you if you bring your children to the African American Civil War Museum, they will be inspired by the images that they see. They will be impressed by our living history reenactors who are always available. And they will be involved in our scavenger hunt that takes them throughout our exhibit. That's the African American Civil War Museum, 1925 Vermont Avenue. Our hours are 10 to 6.30 on weekdays, 12 to 4 on Saturdays and Sundays. See it. Be inspired. And we are back. You're listening to the Lindia Grant Show here on Spirit 1340 WYCB in Washington, D.C. on Radio 1. Now we're going to talk to Louis Nelson designer of the Korean War Memorial. He's going to give us a quick announcement. Tell us what's going on next weekend, Lewis. Well, hi, uh, Lydia. It's, uh, on, the, on Wednesday, the uh, 27th, uh, is the anniversary, the 69th anniversary of the ceasefire at the Korean War, 19... Um, uh, <clears throat> and uh, on that day, it will, will commemorate the dedication of the War of Remembrance, which lists all the names of all of the American soldiers, men and women who died in Korea between 1950 and 1953, as well as all of the South Korean soldiers that worked with with the soldiers, with the American soldiers there. And there's about 4,000 of them. So we had 66,000 Americans and 4,000 um, South Koreans that will be honored that day uh, with the Wall of Remembrance, which is being added to the to the 19 soldiers, the sculptures that are out there on the on the mall, uh, and and the Wall of uh, of of faces and portraits of all of those that served. Uh, it'll be a grand day, and um, we wish you to be all coming down and say hello. All right, and you said uh, both presidents are coming. I hope Joe Biden will be back on out by then. President yeah, Biden. That will happen. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. President Biden is expected to attend. And for any of you who want to attend, come on down to the Korean War Memorial next Wednesday. At what time, uh, Louis? It all starts in the morning at nine o'clock. All right. Well, thank you so much. We thank you. Appreciate you for that announcement. You have a great Thanks. weekend. Thank you. Have a grand one. All right. Now we're going to talk to Jennifer, Jennifer Branison. Jennifer um, has a new book called Release the Pressure. She's a friend of uh, seven or eight years or more. She's also a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. I was really excited to participate in a conference 
she had a couple of weeks ago. So Jennifer, talk to us a little bit today about your healing and about your book and how, where you go from here. Awesome. Yes, Lindia, it was a great time at my launch event for Release of Pressure. And, you know, um, Release of Pressure is really a book about how I chronicled my healing journey. Um, and so a little bit about me, I was diagnosed with uterine fibroids at the age of 23. At 24, I was diagnosed with stage 2 endometriosis and also at 27 had high blood pressure and I had a speech impediment um, since I was like a toddler and um, really just wanted to desire change. I had surgery for, for the five boys and endometriosis and all of that and was battling with high blood pressure and all of it came back in the pandemic with a vengeance and really wanted to take time to heal but didn't know where to start but if God would have it I met a coach her name is Christy Rutherford and she is an, an amazing um, women's leadership expert and she herself has healed from um, conditions that were brought on by chronic stress and we, once we identified that chronic stress was, was the root cause in a lot of the conditions that I had, like especially all four of them, um, we worked to, to really do the healing work of, you know, challenging the stories I was telling myself because I didn't think it was possible to heal, really worked on my mindset. And from that, I became pain-free. And I had been pain-free for about a year. Um, now and wrote a book about it and just really trying to get my message out there. Oh my goodness, that is so good, Jennifer. That's why I love the title called Release the Pressure. Do you know, uh, my daughter was dealing with a, a situation and she's here visiting from Arizona and once we resolved that issue a couple of days ago, she was lay on my bed at night before she would go to bed and I could hear her snoring and gritting her teeth, Jennifer. After the problem got resolved, she hasn't snored or grit her teeth since. You know, it's amazing what stress can cause in our lives, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of these conditions that we have, like it comes from stress and we don't realize it until we get a diagnosis of high blood pressure or heart disease or fibroids, like all of that has a lot to do with how we're feeling internally. So I internalized a lot of my emotions, you know? Um, so like I wasn't like the angry type or anything like that. I, you really wouldn't know how I felt, but I felt bad on the inside. I didn't mm -hmm. feel like I was good enough. I didn't feel like I was deserving of anything. Like I didn't matter to people. Um, and that just came from like the traumas of my past and really unresolved traumas that I had to, that I had to deal with. And once I was able to, to challenge those traumas that like those stories are not true anymore, then mm -hmm. it was it was easy to, to heal and instill healthy habits that I now have um that I now have in place until this day. And then in your book, Release the Pressure, tell listeners why they need to get a copy of it and then I want us to tell them where they can get a copy. Sure. So, yeah, so release of pressure is anybody who's just stuck in a cycle of pain or just has, like, an unexplainable condition and they don't know where it comes from or where it came from. Um, it, it might be due to chronic stress. And with with me, I really chronicled step-by-step step of what it took for me to heal and the emotions that I had, negative emotions that I had that were attached to the conditions. And really, it's like I always say that release of pressure is a love story. It's a self-love story because mm -hmm. you really need to make yourself a priority in order to really do the healing work that, that God has for you. You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. ask you, like, what, what do you do to heal? What did you do to heal? Like, what are the steps? But really, it was just, you know, I stopped hoping and praying and wishing God for a miracle and took action and became the miracle. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to become the person um, mm -hmm. that you need in order to receive the healing that you need. And that's exactly what I did. Yes, that gets, Jennifer, I, I want to just add how I did that about 40 years ago when I was married. Uh, my husband was abusive and um, a lot too much to talk about on this show. But when some things were happening in my marriage, I thank God that I had that inner strength because 
I would always do what you just talked about. I would love me more. It's like, you don't have to love me. I I love God. I know he loves me. And I'm going to show you how much I love myself. Sometimes I would spend up all the money I had, go to the store and buy me something, and I would be looking so sharp, Jennifer. I would feel so much better because I was loving me. I know clothes don't make you, but whatever it takes for you to make you happy at the time just so you can feel better about yourself. That's what you were just talking about. Talk to us a little more about that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like we always we always say like seek ye first the kingdom and and mm-hmm. we're always looking for outwardly things, but we don't realize that we have everything within us. You talked about that inner strength. Like we are the energy of our creator. We are source energy. We have that within us and you have have the wherewithal to, to change. With me, I didn't I had no idea that chronic stress was ruling my life, but it took someone completely outside of my situation to really see it and then once we were able to pinpoint it and pinpoint the reason because I had been searching for answers for years and mm-hmm. you know it, it was really about changing your mindset and your belief that you can heal you know we always talk mm-hmm. about how you know like 80 percent of women will be diagnosed with fibroids at age um, by age 50 but what are what, what are the 10 to 20 percent doing what are they doing differently seek out those people you know sometimes mm-hmm. that's what it takes for you to, to, to just stand up and do something different and that's exactly what i did now tell them where they can get a copy of your book too jennifer yeah, so you can go to releasethepressurebook.com. I am also on Amazon, um, but the website is releasethepressurebook.com and get you a copy. And then once you do that, you'll be on the way to changing your life. Oh, my goodness. This is so good. Uh, I, I am so happy that you could be on with us today. Uh, and talk about uh, how what you're doing now. You, you're starting your own business. You're still an employee, but you're launching a new way now, a new life. Absolutely. So, yeah, and I just appreciate you so much for having me on the show. I just remember working on the show, um, and, and now I'm a guest with my own book. But, yeah, so my healing was tied to purpose. Um, and and really had no idea. It hit me like a ton of bricks to really, because once you heal, now it's time to pass the blessing of healing on to another person. So I um, just um, became a coach and and more so want to help women heal the same as I did. So mm-hmm. Tell them how they can contact you if you uh, they want coaching from you. Yeah, so you can go to www.heal. Um, H-E-A-L with Jen.com. You'll be a part of my email list. You'll get all my updates about the program that is launching soon. Okay. Could you say it again? I didn't hear the second part of it. Heal? Heal with Jen.com. Heal with Jen. J-E-N. Yes. Dot com. Okay. All right. Heal with Jen. No spaces, all one word, dot com. Okay? Yes. Do that. And that way you'll be able to send her a message and talk to Jennifer. I mean, she's really a dynamic lady, and she'll be able to provide some coaching to you. Give us your closing comments, and then we're going to go to our close. Right. Yeah. So if you have, so if you don't have not taken anything away from this interview, the one thing that I want you to take away is that it's absolutely possible to heal and change a circumstance. You just have to take action and change your narrative. So challenge the stories that you're telling yourself and just work to take the action and seek out the people that will help you. All right. And uh, when I was at her conference, I, I remember the topic of my speech was, Follow the yellow brick road. And I'm telling you, I, they told me I got a lot of good feedback from that. So all that means is take the path God has given you, and that's what Jennifer is doing right now. You know, God sent us all down here with a purpose, each and every one. Scripture tells us that. But it's, Les Brown used to tell us when I was in training with him, he said it's more dreams in the graveyard because people had the vision but they would not move forward on it. Fear, whatever it is, I don't know what it is might be stopping you, but thank God Jennifer is moving on her. She was already doing a lot, but now she's on her main purpose that's going to 
carry her through the rest of her life. Thank you for being my guest today, Jennifer. Thank you. All right. You're listening to the Lindy and Grant Show. I want you to go to uh, YouTube and Google the Lindy and Grant Show. And when you see one of the shows you want to listen to, just click subscribe. Subscribe to our show. We are growing. We are getting close to having a 1,000 subscribers, and we're trying to get 10,000. And then we're going to keep going. So we ask that you will subscribe to the Lindia Grant Show so that you can get a copy every week. Next week, our guest will be a group from the Pink House Group. It's uh, several people from the Pink House Group. They help the needy. It's a nonprofit out in Montgomery County. I'm sorry, out in Prince George's County. They help the needy and give to them food and clothing. And they're going to talk to us next week about the Pink House Group. Uh, we hope this show has been helpful to you today with uh, Dr. Julian Malvo and with Lewis t- inviting you out to the Korea Korean War Memorial next Wednesday. And then we had Jennifer. So we thank you for tuning in to the Mindy Grant Show uh, next week. Tune in to Sandy and uh, some of the others in the Pink House group. All right. On Sunday, I always invite you to come out to the All Nations Baptist Church. Our pastor is the Reverend Dr. James Coleman. We're located at number two, Rhode Island Avenue. Next week, tune in to Sandy and uh, some of the others in the Pink House group. All right. On Sunday, I always invite you to come out to the All Nations Baptist Church. Our pastor is the Reverend Dr. James Coleman. We're located at number two, Rhode Island Avenue, Northeast Washington, D.C. Or if you come on the North Capitol side, it's 2001 North Capitol Street, Northeast. Our pastor's preaching a series on the topic, Jesus, the light of the world. And this week he'll be preaching part three, and it is so good, you all. You don't want to miss that. Words, thoughts, and deeds have a boomerang effect. So be careful what you send out. Scripture says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So think on these things from the Lindy and Grant Show. I am your host. Until next week, good day. Thank you for listening to the Lindy and Grant Show. Think on these things with your host, Lindy and Grant.